This is the Bible Explained by Pastor Michael Yeo. Shalom everyone. Welcome again to another Faith Building Bible Study on the Book of Luke. Now today, we will consider the way to follow Jesus based on an account from Luke 9 verse 57 to 62. Now verse 57 to 58, Now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to Jesus, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Now someone approached and wanted to follow Jesus. And that's a good thing. Matthew wrote that this man was a teacher of religious law. You find in Matthew chapter 8. Now, most of these leaders became Jesus' enemies. But at least one apparently recognized Jesus' authority and wanted to be his follower. Now, Jesus replied, however, pointed out to the man the cause of becoming a disciple or a follower of Jesus. Jesus did not grab unto disciples, eagerly taking anyone who wanted to follow him. Those who truly wanted to be Jesus' disciples needed to understand that it would cost them something. And so, while most of God's creatures have warm places in which to live and to sleep, the Son of Man had no home of His own, no place even to lay His head. Now, to be Jesus' disciple, a person must willingly put aside worldly security. Now, verse 59 to 60, Then Jesus said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. Now, the previous man came on his own to Jesus. But this time, however, Jesus asked another man to be his disciple. But this man explained that he first needed to return home and bury his father. Now, the reason is not given, but whatever it was, the man wanted to do it first. Now, whether his concern was fulfilling a duty, having financial security, keeping family approval or something else, he did not want to commit himself to Jesus just yet. And Jesus responds, let those who are spiritually dying, those who have not responded to the call to commitment, stay home and handle responsibilities such as burying the dead. Now, this may sound insensitive, but it had precedence. A high priest and those who had taken the Nazarite vow were required by the law to avoid the corpse of even a parent. This you find in Leviticus and Numbers. Now, a later Jewish president says that if there were enough people in attendance, a student of the Torah should not stop his studying to bury the dead. Now, the point here is this. Jesus did not hesitate to demand complete loyalty. Jesus' direct challenge forces believers to evaluate their priorities. Now, in verse 61 to 62, and another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, No one, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. A third person approached, and this one, like the first, expressed his desire to follow Jesus. However, this man also had something he wanted to do first, and Jesus ascertained in this potential follower a sense of reluctance and an unfortunate willingness to put something else ahead of following Jesus. This was not the type of follower Jesus needed. The picture of a person putting a hand to the plow 
and looking back can be compared with Elijah's call of Elisha in 1 Kings 19. Elisha was called to be a prophet right in the middle of plowing a field and he never looked back. Now, in fact, he slaughtered the oxen so that there would be no temptation for him to return. Now, Elisha then moved wholeheartedly into the ministry to which he had been called. Jesus explained that service in the kingdom of God was of such vital importance that his followers must make it their top priority. They must step out in faith to serve him without looking back. Now, some reflections here. The way I see it, it seems Jesus does not lower his standard. Now, he requires that we devote everything that we are and have to him or nothing at all. There is no in-between or curve here. It is important to realize that these verses are not just directed to those who are considering full-time Christian ministry. They are addressed to everyone who would consider being a follower of Jesus Christ or being a disciple. The Lord draws a line in the sand. The only way to follow Jesus is wholehearted commitment. Now, two observations. First is this. There are those who think that following Jesus is important, but yet not the most important thing in life. Now, these three men all thought that following Jesus was a good thing to do, and they were not wrong. And two of them expressed their own desire to follow him, which is more than could be said of many in the crowds who have heard Jesus preach and saw the miracles. But while they wanted to follow Jesus and viewed that as important, it wasn't the most important thing to them. There were other factors that needed to be considered. And in the words of the third man, I will follow you, Lord, but... Dot, dot, dot. Now that word, but, has kept many well-meaning people out of the kingdom of God. But Jesus wasn't a dishonest recruiter. Jesus wants us to know up front that there is a price to follow him and the cost is high. Following Jesus must be more important than our personal comfort and personal goals. Jesus says no one, after putting his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. In other words, Jesus' followers must be totally focused on his purpose. They cannot keep one foot in the world just in case things don't work out in the kingdom of God. Their hearts cannot be divided between living for the old way of life and for living for Christ. Now, in a picture of total dedication to a task, a writer explains, Following Jesus is not a task which is added to others like working a second job. It is everything. It is a solemn commitment which forces the disciples to be to reorder all their other duties. So the point is this. Following Jesus is not just an important thing. It's the most important thing in life. Making our commitment to Jesus Christ the most important thing in life means several things actually. One is this, commitment to Christ cannot be based on just an emotional, idealistic decision. The first man was probably caught up with the euphoria of the moment. Crowds were following Jesus. Hundreds were being healed. Jesus' disciples were a part of this exciting movement. And the man wanted in on the action. So he says, I will follow you wherever you go. 
But Jesus realised that the man had not thought it through carefully. Profession is easy. Practice over the long haul is the real test. The other thing about commitment is this. Commitment to Christ cannot be a casual whenever you find the time matter. What could be more noble and biblical than burying one's father? But Jesus won't allow this would-be follower to postpone his commitment until it is convenient, even for this noble purpose. The other thing about commitment is this. Commitment to Christ cannot be a phase in life that you put behind you someday. Now, while the Christian life is a process of daily yielding more and more to the Lord, it can never be approached from the mentality, I will try it and see if it works. Otherwise, I'll go back to the old ways or try some other way. If Jesus is the Lord, then the only way is to go forward with Him. Turning back is not even an option since the only way to follow Jesus is totally each one of us must soberly ask ourselves the question, am I following Jesus wholeheartedly? Am I holding back something for myself? Am I keeping one foot in the world just in case? Am I hanging on to some secret sins just so I won't miss out on what the world has to offer? Am I trying to serve Christ and wealth at the same time? Am I saying, I will follow you, Lord, but... Dot, dot, dot. Everything after that but needs to go. Before we close in prayer, here are some discussion questions for further reflection. Is following Jesus totally a once-for-all decision, an ongoing process or both? How should following Christ affect our use of our time, our money and our abilities? Is there a difference between salvation and discipleship? Is the latter an option for the super committed? Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for the lesson on discipleship today. We know now that following you is not just an important thing, it ought to be the most important thing in life. It cannot be based on an emotional, idealistic decision. It cannot be a casual whenever you find the time matter. And it cannot be a phase in life that we put behind us someday. Holy Spirit, process us that we become true disciples of yours and not remain as mere believers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining this session of The Bible Explained. If you've been blessed by this study, please like and share our church Facebook page and YouTube channel so more can be blessed by God's Word. If you'd like to get connected with us, there's the comment section or you can visit www.churchofpraise.org.my We'll see you in the next session as we continue our reading of the book of Luke. Do read the relevant passages beforehand in order to get the best out of the study. Lastly, if you have any questions, reach out to us via equipped at churchofpraise.org.my and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Looking forward to seeing you again.